Hello, I'm Michael. And I'm Porter, and we're from Nakamoto Heating Solutions. Today, we're going to show you how to make a Bitcoin space heater built off of a Bitmain S9 amp miner. So we're using immersion technology, meaning the whole miner is filled with oil that gets pumped through off-the-shelf products like PC ra water cooling radiators, submersible pumps, and just a regular tubing and a couple of fans that can completely heat your room or space with mining Bitcoin at the same time. Now, how, how warm do you think we can get a room with this? You can get it easily warmer than you want. Yeah. So it's not as much as a sour sauna, but you can get pretty nicely good temperatures. All right. Sounds good. Let's get started. All right. Now we want to actually build our space heater. First, we're going to look at everything that we need. What everything you will see here, you can buy at any regular hardware store or even online in all kinds of different stores. And even the special pieces are 3D printed. So you, if you have access to a 3D printer, you can print them yourself or you'll find somebody online that can print them for you. We really made a lot of focus to actually use super simple parts. And you will see this now that we go through this. All right, we start with first you need two pans. The first pan we're going to use to clean our S9. And the second pan we're going to use to actually build the space heater. We're also going to need a heat gun because we're going to do some soldering and shrink tubing. We need a couple of tools. Um, we have some pliers. We need an, a, a brush to clean the S3s, screwdriver, um, and just some um, tools that you should have around. We will use them individually while we actually use them, so you will see what they're used for. And of course, we need the main star. This is an ant miner S9, which is going to be the main piece of our space heater. As you see it here, it should arrive if you buy, when you buy it. Um, and we're going to disassemble it later. We're going to need an Ethernet cable to connect the S9 to the internet. Then we have a couple of 3D printed pieces. The first one is a base plate or injector plate, which the S9 is going to sit on. That one is going to um, sit at the bottom. We're going to epoxy glue it with some epoxy glue um, to the S9 itself. Then we have a top plate, which sits on top of the S9 and also is, holds the um, power supply in place. Then we have six little pieces that create a separator between the hash boards and the casing so that the oil doesn't go out too early. And then we need also um, our power supply that should come with the S9 when you buy it. Like I said, we, already, we also need some epoxy. Then we need a radiator. This is a standard computer radiator that you can use for computer um, water cooling builds. Um, this one is a three uh, 120 millimeter radiator that you can find pretty much anywhere. We're going to need some connectors to connect from the radiator that has screw terminals to our normal tubing. And we're also going to need some pinch clamps that will connect our tubing to these connectors and some screws that should come with the radiator already. Then, of course, we need some tubing. Uh, we're going to tell you which tubing size this is in the description. Um, we have a submersible pump. This is a standard submersible pump that is rated for a bit higher temperatures. And then, of course, uh, we need our fans. Because this is a three, radio, a three fan, we have three fans and also some protection grills. Um, yes, and last but not least, we also need our oil. And we are using um, engineered fluids, bit cool, specifically made to cool down um, or to submerge your Bitcoin based miners in liquid. And that's what we're going to use to actually circulate and get the heat out of it. All right, now that you've seen an entire parts list and the tools that you're going to need to build one of your own Nakamoto heating solutions at home, we're going to get started by taking apart this S9. 
But before you even start getting your hands dirty and taking this thing apart, we strongly, strongly suggest that you download and install the Brains OS Plus operating system. It's an aftermarket firmware that is going to give you a lot more control over the power consumption, power consumption and dynamic power scaling of this system. The reason why we suggest you do this first is because it'll allow you to test and make sure that the OS Plus is already working instead of waiting until you built the entire system and then finding out that it doesn't work. So with that said, there's plenty of documentation on the Brains OS Plus website and there are several different ways to do it. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is actually, we wanna remove these cables to make sure that they're not gonna get caught up and be in the way of anything else that we're doing down the line. And they can be a little bit tricky, but they just have these little pinch ends on them and pinch them, remove, and go on to the next one. Okay, after we've removed the first three there, we're gonna go ahead and remove these as well because ultimately we wanna take these fans off and we're gonna take everything out. So these are just gonna get in our way if we don't. There we go. Now you could take the time to remove all these four screws, but it's kind of a wasted effort when you can remove these and you'll be able to pull off the entire unit as one piece. Now, it might have been a good idea to start with the other side first, but I'll just hold these in and flip it over. It's no big deal, but if you want to make it easier on yourself, one less thing to think about. All right, now that we've removed the fans here, I'm going to flip this back over. We're going to remove each of these boards individually and get them ready to clean. And finally, we'll remove our last piece here. It has two little clamps on the sides. If you just push them apart with your thumbs, this board will slide right out. And that's it, folks. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We've taken apart your Antmine S9. We're ready to move on to the next stage, cleaning these boards. All right, so we just took apart the S9 to get everything ready um, to transfer into a, an immersion system. And one of the most important things to take into consideration when you're doing this is that you're taking a miner that's been running through air and we're now putting it into a liquid. So one of the byproducts of that is that it's pulling in all sorts of dust and hair and other particulate matter through the air. We wanna make sure and get rid of as much of that as possible before we put it into our submerged system because we don't want any of that stuff to clog up the radiator or clog up the pumps or anything else. So cleaning your boards and the different components at this stage is really, really an important step and shouldn't be overlooked. First thing we'll do, is we'll get a little compressed air and we're gonna to try to blow out the really big stuff. If there's anything big on the boards, we're just gonna Just gonna try and get the big stuff out before we actually clean it in the tub. In this tub here, just put a little bit of bit cool in there. Um, same stuff we're gonna be submerging it in later, but uh, that's that's all we've done. So I'm just gonna put this in there. And once you put the board in the tub, you want to give it a little shake, right? Now 
we're not talking about shake, rattle, and roll, or trying to do your laundry in an old-fashioned uh, laundry table or anything like that. Again, we're just trying to break up that particulate matter and get as much out of there as possible. So you do that a good 15, 20, 30 seconds each side. And after that, you can pull the board out, let it drain off a bit. And then we're gonna get our compressed air and we're gonna blow it one more time. Make sure we got as much off there as possible. Now we'd recommend, unless you want air, the oil to go shooting all over the place, put it over the container, um, but don't put the air directly into the container or you'll have the same problem. All right, and then go ahead and put it in another container. Wash, rinse, repeat. Same thing over again. Now one other important thing that you might want to consider is after you've done the bit cool rinse and it can be before or after the air, but if you notice there's still some grime on there that didn't come off, just grab yourself any kind of little brush like this and as you just brush it off, just get in there. It's not going to make, you know, it's not going to harm anything. In fact, it's going to help to make sure that you get these components as clean as possible before they finally go into the immersion system. Okay, now finally, we'll grab our casing. And these really do tend to get dirty. They have some grooves in there that they get all gummed up with gunk. So, you know, you can, same thing, set it in there, give it a shake, get the oil all around. And then don't be afraid to get your arms in there. Use a little elbow grease and clean this thing up. Really pay attention that you get into all those grooves, especially the, the slots. That's where a lot of this dirt and gunk is building up in there. So get in there, push the brush, use a little muscle, get nice and clean. And this one we don't really have to blow off. We're just gonna set it over here on the paper towel to dry. Let's go ahead and take a look at the grime we got out of that system. As you can see, there's enough grit and grime in there, even a dead bug. That's not the type of stuff that you want, want to be running through your radiator or through your pump. That's why this step is important. Don't leave out the cleaning. It'll do right in the end. All right, so now that our S9s are clean, we can start building. Now, like we mentioned at the beginning, we looked for solutions that makes the whole build extremely simple and easy for anybody to do. Now, what we need to do, we need to mount our radiator to this S9 casing. Now, these S9s, later, it, we will build the injector plate at the bottom, where also the control board sits and the top will be where the slots are that's where the hash boards actually fit in so we need to find a way how to mount the radiator to this casing in some way and actually turns out that most of these radiators come with these standoff screws that are made for the fans to attach to and if we screw them in only at the bottom like that four of them
So if you have four of them, we can put it right away and mount it to the S9 casing. The problem is though, we're going to also have a top plate that is the holder for the power supply. And now this one doesn't fit anymore because the screws are coming out. So what we're going to do, we're going to mark the location of the screws with a Sharpie. Like that. And now we're going to cut in a little groove for these screws as well, so that they go slightly below and the top plate will, fit, will still fit. Now you can mill these screws with either a rotary tool or also an angle grinder if you like sparks. We're just going to use the rotary tool because it's a little bit less messy and um, a bit easier. But of course, before all of that, safety first. So we're going to protect our hearing and also our eyes. And now we can go to town. Now I found it's the simplest if you just create two grooves with the rotary tool and take pliers and just remove the middle part. It's aluminium, so it's not going to be very hard to do that. And now we do the same on the other side. And so now we can take our radiator with the four screws and we can fold this in there and it's going to be sit in there nice and tight and our top plate will still perfectly fit on top of it and we can continue building from here on. Okay, now that we have mounted the radiator we want to figure out actually how the oil goes through this S9. Now, an S9 usually sits like that and gets air pushed from one side to the other. But in order to use the radiator, we're going to run oil through. Now, in order to do this even easier, we're going to mount the S9 in a vertical orientation. And we want to push oil from the bottom through it so that the oil gets heated up while it goes through it. And then it goes around the casing and goes back out again and then while it comes out it will take the heat from the hash bars that are sitting in there with them and it's going to go through the radiator and come back in. Now in order to do this we have a so-called injector plate. Now this is 3D printed with ABS. It is a design by Adrian. Thanks a lot for that. Um, you can find the designs for them all online on our GitHub. And basically the injector plates have two holes. One of them is for the inlet, so the oil gets pushed through here and comes throughout through this hole here to this little tunnel and gets dispersed in here. And now this one is going to sit on top of the S9 like that and it perfectly fits the size of it and it's going to push the oil through the S9 around it. The second hole that is open here can be used to attach a pump to then suck the oil out again. Now we are not going to use this hole in our, in our system, but maybe some other um, systems are going to use this. So, like I said, this is going to be mounted on top of here. Now, in order this all work, we need an oil tight seal here because, if, because we have some gravity to overtake. So if the oil doesn't go around, if, there's a, if there's, the seal is not tight, the oil will just spit out of here and the system wouldn't work. So we need to glue the casing to the injector plate. And in order to do this, we're going to use just regular epoxy. We use five minute epoxy just because it sets quite fast. And we're going to glue, put the epoxy around the sides so that when we put the S9 on top of it, there will be a nice seal that is oil tight. So let's do this now. We'll have a little cup. So we can prepare our epoxy. Now this is a one-to-one -one ratio epoxy. So we need the same amount of part A and part B. Now 
All right. Now we can mix this up. And we can start putting this epoxy around here. All right, after we have done that, we line our holes, make sure that we don't put this outlet hole over where the uh, control board is gonna go. And we just place this right on, press it down. Now in order to help this, we can actually use the screws. So we turn it all around and we're gonna use the screws from the regular connector for the fans, they fit perfectly also on top here. So we're gonna screw them in there. All right, now that this is done, we can check around and make sure that we have a good seal. If we maybe find something where we're not that happy with, you can always add a little bit more epoxy around the sides to ensure that we have a good seal. But usually these plates, they fit perfectly. So there's not much that you have to do. Turn it around. So we have some weight. We can also put something on top of it like our power supply to press it down a little bit more and give this around an hour to dry um, and then we can continue. All right, so now that we have mounted our injector plate to the casing, we want to work on our pump. Now we are using regular submersible pumps. The only thing you have to check for is that they are rated for more than 60 degrees Celsius because the oil actually gets more than 60 degrees. So in our experience, we use some pumps that will shut off when they get too warm. This one is one that is rated to 100 degrees and um, it will continue work. Now, most pumps, they come with some kind of connector. There's not really a standard. This one has a barrel plug. Um, but what we would like to do we would like to run them um, on 12 volts. The pump is a 12 volt and our control board already has 12 volts because the fans that are usually connected at the front and the back of the miners are also 12 volts. So what we can do is if we have a connector like this, which is just a cut off connector from, an, from a fan, we can basically steal with connecting this to here, we can basically steal 12 volts from it and run the pump. But in order to do this, we need to remove that connector and mount our fan connector. Now, of course, the next question is how long needs the cable to be? In our system, this control board sits here. And this is the inlet. And so we're gonna probably put the pump somewhere around here. So this means in order to reach here, we need probably roughly only a third of the cable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the cable here, like that, don't need that anymore. And we're gonna strip some of this cable off, maybe a little bit more, all right. So this connector has black and red and this one is white and red so we will assume that the white is the black and the red is the red now the yellow one we actually don't need because that is to control the speed of the fans so we're just going to cut them off we don't need this at all and the other one we're going to solder on for do that we remove the insulation of the pump and also the insulation of the connector
like that. We're going to turn on our soldering iron so it's hot when we need it. And we also want to use some shrink tubing. Now, don't forget to put the shrink tubing on before, and we actually don't need that much. I'm going to cut off a little bit of these. And I'm going to put the shrink tubing over the connectors, like that. And now we can take our connector, twist them together. on both sides. Like that. Now we take our soldering iron. And solder these on there. that. Now you don't need to use solder, you could also just twist them, put some heat shrink tubing around this, but it's just much better, it's, you have a much better connection and it's um, overall just encouraged to do that. Now we can put our shrink tubing over it, like that, so it's in the middle. Take a hot air gun, you can also use a lighter if you want to. Turn this on, let it heat up, and put them over it, let the shrink tubing shrink, not too much or it's going to burn, that's already enough. And that's it, we have our pump connected, with that we can now, when we build the actual system, we can connect the pump to our power supply or to our control board and we have a 12 volt running pump and that's it. And now that our pump is ready, it's time to reassemble our miner so that we can move on to the next phase of this build process. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of the boards and we're going to add some of our 3D printed pieces. What is important to realize and pay attention here is that these pieces of foam are removed from the motherboard. Let me show you why really quickly, visually. When we place the boards back into the miner, you'll see the foam is usually how this board gets seated into these slots. But the bit cool oil will actually dissolve these over time. So again, we don't want to have pieces floating around in our system and we want to have as much oil tightness, for lack of a better term, as possible. So we'll go ahead and remove these pieces of foam. You can just get your pair of pliers and you just want to grab it at the edge, and if you're lucky, you pull a nice, nice, steady bit of pressure and gently pull and remove as much as possible. Now you can see it doesn't always come off in one piece. That's fine. We'll grab more. Okay, and let's get that last piece off of there. Okay, move that to the side. Now you might have some of the glue on there as well. And you can see it's kind of, it's just something if you want to take off as much of that as possible. So if you can remove big piece like that, and if you want to leave the rest, that's okay. But what you want to make sure of is that you don't have any extra pieces hanging off of there. So this is pretty clean as it is. So we'll go ahead and place this back into the housing. Okay. 
And we found it's easier to actually put the hash boards into the housing and then add the 3D printed pieces around it. And they are bi-directional, so it doesn't really matter which way. Just make sure that you push it down there nice and snug to get that seal. There we go, and that's the first one. And now, of course, thanks to a little movie magic and editing, I have already removed those foam pieces very, very quickly. Now, a keen observer might have noticed, it might have been easier to put the control board in first. And you know what? I'm not going to disagree with you, but that's okay. We don't have to start everything over. We can just pull these out just a little bit, just enough space, grab our control board, put it into position. Remember, this also has grooves or slots, rather. So we use our thumbs to open up those clamps. Snap it into place, put this back up on its end. All right, so now that the hash boards are back in the miner, we can start continuing assembling it. Now, in order to connect it all, we use um, tubing. Now, this is polyethylene tubing. Um, technically, you can use others, but we made best experience with that. This is one and a half inch um, outer diameter and three eighths inch inner diameter. We're going to put up the same numbers in millimeters as well. And we're using these connectors here. Now, these connectors are one quarter um, G one fourth um, connectors that connect to the radiator and we also made it the same connector also on the injector plate and they will fit in there pretty well. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take our radiator and we're going to screw that in there. For these two and the same goes also to the injector. Now make sure that you connect we, as I said, we don't use the one that is open because our pump directly just sucks oil in directly from the pan. So we don't use that. If you have another type of pump, you can just screw that one in there. But we're only going to use the inlet. So that's that one. And we're going to screw that in here. Okay. Now we can take the radiator, mount it into the holes that we cut so that the radiator sits there. And we're going to take our top plate and we screw the top plate with the screws that you removed uh, when we disassembled the fans. We screw them back in there and it's going to hold our radiator nice and tight. All right, so that's done. Now we can actually put it into the container that it's gonna live in. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm just using a, a see-through glass container. Now we need to make sure that it's tall enough um, for some bit cool to stay in here. Now we will suggest not to use that one, of course, to actually build a system. Maybe you wanna have a cooler or something taller, maybe even with a handle or something, that could be used, but for a demonstration, we're just gonna use this. So we're gonna set our miner in here. And now we're gonna place the pump where it's gonna go. Now the pump is gonna sit back here on this side, because the inlet for the oil is here and the pump putting it on the other side is probably is the easiest. And now we can start cutting the piping. For that, we take off first the first piece here because we don't need that. All 
right. Now this is a specific pipe cutter. Um, if you have one, great. But in the end, you could also use any other thing to cut your pipes with. All right, so now we just measure the length we need. We want to go from down here, probably up in a little bit, maybe a little curve. And we want to go up here into the radiator. So I mark this with my finger and come up here and cut it off. Simple. So that's the first one. Now the same we also want to do for the pipe, uh, for the pump, sorry. So the pump is down here and we want to go from down at the pump, like here. It's a bit hard, but that's okay. So maybe something like that. So we mark it with the finger again and cut it right off. That's all we need. That's for the next project. Okay. So now in order to get these um, pieces over there, you can see it doesn't fit. Now that's a good thing because it will give us a good fit when we actually have it over. Now I'm going to remove that one because it's going to be a bit easier to show. Now what we need to do is first get one of these pinch clamps. They will help to make it sealed afterwards. You can squeeze them together with pliers like that and we can get them over it. Now you want the same size pinch clamps as the tubing because that gives you the best seal. We put them in there. Now, in order to get this over here, as I said, don't force it because the plastic could actually break if you put too much pressure on it. What we do instead is we take our heat gun and set it on a low heat. We don't need to melt it. We just need to heat it up a little bit and then we can get this nicely just over it. So let's do that. Turn it on, low heat. Now we don't want to heat, hold that with our hand because it's going to be hot. So I'm going to put it in these nose pliers and I'm just going to heat up the plastic a little bit for inside, but also around. Now we only need to heat up the very edge of it because that's where the pipe is going to go through but we want to make sure that it's nice and even heated up. You can feel already it's getting a bit softer. Okay, much better. Okay. And now we can just press this right over there. And you see, now push it together, keep it while it's cooling down. So what means that the plastic or the tubing will actually start to harden in that position. And now we can leave that and we can take our clamp, push it together and put this right over like that and with that we have a perfect oil tight seal. Now we want to do the same because this goes from the bottom up here in there as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this into here. So when you remove the clamp you can actually turn it. You cannot remove it but you can easily turn it. So I can put this down here and screw this. Maybe because it's hard in there, I can take it out and I can...
a nice fit. Okay, we're gonna put it back up. Now we're gonna push our clamp over it. Like that, and now we can take the tubing like that and do the same up here. Don't forget the clamp again. Now we heat this up. And after we're done, we just push it over here and keep pushing, keep pushing so we can get hard in this way. All right. And now to make it even more secure, we take our clamp and slide that one over as well. And there we go. Now for our pump, we do the exact same. Just the pump already has a connector and this again, very similar, almost fits in. So we do the same. We take our clamp, put it in there already heat up should be enough and we can slide this over and keep pushing looks good bring over our clamp Let it go like that. And the last one, same as before, put the clamp over, heat up. And go over here, keep pressing. There we go. Don't need you anymore. All right, and with that, we have our inlet connected to the radiator and we have our pump connected also to the radiator and the pump is gonna sit down here. It's gonna suck in the oil, push it through here into the radiator where the fans are gonna be. The fans are gonna cool it down because they heat the hot oil, heats the air and therefore also cools the oil and then the oil comes out here again and goes into the injector plate, goes through the injector plate, through all the miners, flows over with it, goes into the pan and receipts, repeats the circle. All right, so we continue building our space heater as next we want to install the fans. Now it would probably maybe have sent, made sense to install the fans before we install the radiator. heater. We were a bit eager in sawing the, ra the radiator, oh well. Uh, luckily we can actually just put all of this on its side carefully, like that. And that gives us a bit simpler way to install the radiators, uh, the fans. Now the fans are super simple. They are um, Noctua 12 millimeter fans that are made specifically for radiators. There are some fans that are made to move more airflow and others are made to create more pressure. And we need pressure to get the air through this. So make sure that you get, if you have choice of different fans, get some that create a lot of pressure. Now we're just gonna mount them like this and we're gonna use our um, fan grills from the original fans. And we're just gonna mount them in here. Now we wanna make sure that the cables all come out on the same side. It's gonna mix it much easier for cable management later. All right, now that all the fans are attached, we can carefully move it back up. Okay. So now for the cable management of the fans. Now we have three fans 
And, but as they're all controlling one thing, we actually want to connect them to one single of these connectors on the control board. Because then the control board will control all three fans at once. Now if you buy these Noctua fans, they actually come with Y splitters. And if we connect two of these Y splitters together, we can connect all three of them to one single connector. So we'll do that. Like that. And the third one goes in here. And now we can connect that single one to the fan power supply. Make sure that you connect it the right way. That the black one, the black cable, goes on this side. That's the ground. Like that. And so now the control board will think that there's just one fan, even though there are three of them, and control all of them at the same time. And with that, we're ready to install the power supply. Radiator is mounted, the fans are on, next is the power supply. Now the top plate actually has grooves for a regular Bitmain AP w3 plus plus power supply that's the most common one now you might have another one that's also okay um that has maybe slightly different dimensions but it will still fit on top of it so we're just going to mount this on top here and i actually removed all there's some shrieking shriek, shrink tubing over these when you buy them i removed them because honestly it's much easier to mount all of them onto the miners now one of them goes down here to the control board and the other ones all go to the miners himself and we just connect one by one into these miners, uh, into the hash board. All right, now we take our container and put this whole thing in there, like that. We move our pump behind here and also connect the pump to one of the fan connectors. And that's it. The system is ready for the oil. The power supply is mounted. Now we need to also connect some ethernet to our miner or the mined Bitcoin can't go anywhere. So we're gonna do this here. All right, that is in. We connect that one to the internet and over here. Okay. Now we're ready for some oil and Porter is gonna bring the bit cool. Now it's important that we actually fill the bit cool into the miner directly because we wanna measure, we don't wanna to put too much oil in it. So we wanna fill up inside the bit cool or inside the miner first. Now we can also see that it's actually sealed. There's nothing that comes out at the bottom, that's good. And as soon as the bit cool overfills, we want to continue filling it up because we need some reservoir in the bottom of the pan so the pump can actually suck it up again. So we just continue until the pump inlet is nicely submerged. Just around now, we can stop. All right, so to verify, we have oil in there and we can also see there's oil at the bottom in the pan as well. The pump, the inlet is nicely submerged so we can suck oil in there and push it through the system. All right, enough of this explanation. Let's fire this thing up. All right, and see if it let's works. do it. Okay, we're gonna put back the power supply. I think we're gonna leave it on the side for now. It's gonna be easier to see what's happening. And, Porter, do you wanna do it? Do the honors. Don't get electrocuted. Yeah, right. Well, good thing this is non-conductive. 
Oh, and it works. And it's running. Oh. So the first thing that happens is the oil, there's obviously a lot of air inside the radiator. So that was what we shortly saw, the blubbering. So, but it all perched that. And we can see it's nicely running. How's our pump? Is that submerged enough? The pump is in it, yes. If the pump would not be submerged, we would actually hear it. I can pull it out a little bit. You can hear. And we would also see um, how it would pull actually air through the system. So you see now it's perching the air out. And the biggest indicator is that we see actually oil coming out of the top plate, which is the case here. So that's all we wanted. Okay, now that it's all running, the oil flow looks good. We can see that the oil is flowing over it nicely. And we can actually already feel that it's getting warmer. We want to make sure that the power supply is actually mounted. So for that, as you already seen, the top plate has grooves for the power supply. So we can put the power supply in there. And we can now use zip ties to zip our miner into here, one on each side. All right, and with that, if we connect it again, we have a nice contained system with the power supply on top and it's actually possible to lift it from the power supply if you would need to, for any reason, move it into another container now. Maybe if you want something more um, smaller footprint. So how long do you think it's going to take for this to heat up enough to actually generate enough heat to call this a space heater? It usually takes maybe four to five minutes, not mm -hmm. much. Um, an S9 uses around 1,400 to 1,600 watts. That's a lot of heat. So it will heat up the oil pretty fast and you will feel warm airflow pretty fast. Well, considering how hot it is today where we're filming this, I don't think we need to sit around and wait for this to start blowing You don't want a air. sauna? No, I think you can blow enough hot air for both of us. All right. That's good. <laughs> All right. All Thanks. right. Thank you. Enjoy. Cheers.